Robbie, what's on your radar? You like this one, Ryan? <laughs> so Stand Together is a charitable organization founded by Charles Koch that gives money to libertarian groups and causes. Works to advance classically liberal ideas on a variety of issues, school choice, criminal justice reform, regulation, foreign policy, to name just a few. So Stand Together works with right-leaning organizations on some of these issues, left-leaning organizations on other issues, and also with organizations that don't neatly fit the left-right paradigm. Now, full disclosure, the Reason Foundation, which publishes Reason Magazine, where I also work, is a recipient of support from Stand Together. So that's established. You, you're, take that for, for what it's worth. Now, unfortunately, many progressive journalists and even some populist conservatives, they view everything connected to the Koch brothers as nefarious by default. In, in their zeal to denounce Koch's influence on American politics, they end up attacking policies that they should otherwise support. And I think this is a good case of that. So take a look at this bizarre and misleading exclusive report on Stand Together from Judd Legum, who is a progressive journalist, writes the newsletter Popular Information. Now, Legum accuses Stand Together of supporting, quote, a partial victory for Russia in Ukraine and wanting the U.S. to drop virtually all Russian sanctions. Quote, in an internal email obtained exclusively by popular information, Stand Together, the influential nonprofit group run by right-wing billionaire Charles Koch, argues that the United States should seek to deliver a partial victory to Russia in Ukraine, writes Legum. The email was sent to Stand Together staff by Dan Caldwell, the group's vice president of foreign policy, on March 16th. The subject line was an update on Ukraine. So this is an article by Legum that's trying to paint the Koch network as sort of like sympathetic kind of to Putin or not as on board with helping Ukraine as the rest of us are supposed to be. But nowhere in his article does Legum share the email in its entirety. Instead, he selectively quotes from it, leaving out important clarifying context. He also takes great pains to portray skepticism of the long-term effectiveness of economic sanctions as some kind of kooky fringe belief. Legum describes Caldwell's email as offering a, quote, boilerplate denunciation of Russian President Vladimir Putin that, quote, quickly pivots to a broad rebuke of international efforts to sanction the Russian government, as if the sentiment expressed is brief or insincere. So I'm going to read to you the relevant section of the email. I'm going to end up reading the entire email, but so this is, this is how it starts. Quote, I wanted to take a moment to better connect you to our sense of things regarding the war in Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is immoral, unjustified, and should be immediately halted. In addition, the regime of Vladimir Putin is authoritarian and has inhibited the Russian people from enjoying the benefits of a free and open society. Throughout our decades-long history, our community has consist consistently stood against unjust wars, advocated for peaceful relations between nations. So while we support the Ukrainian people, we also must do everything we can to prevent escalation and reduce the threat of nuclear conflict. Understandably, the invasion of Ukraine and the suffering inflicted on its people by the Putin regime has evoked a strong response among us all. This has contributed to demands for, from some for the United States to take a more aggressive posture against Russia, including calls for actions that would entail direct military strikes against Russian forces, such as the imposition of a NATO no-fly zone over Ukraine. However, it is not in America's or anyone's interest for the war to escalate into a larger conflict between a nuclear-armed Russia and the United States, especially not the Ukrainians, who will bear the brunt of a more violent and widespread conflict. This is not to say the United States should do nothing. End quote. So that's how the, how the email begins. Now, I'm not sure why Legum reads this as a boilerplate denunciation followed by a quick pivot. I read it as a sober, well-considered. In truth, I can't find anything in it that I disagree with. Perhaps Legum would say that's because I too am compromised by Coke dollars. In the next half of the statement, Caldwell expresses support for sanctions against specific Russian leaders and says that broader sanctions should, quote, never be taken off the table. But he perceptively questions whether broad-based, long-running sanctions have generally succeeded in the past, provides various examples of regimes that withstood sanctioning. I'm continuing to read from the email. Quote, the United States should support diplomatic efforts to help end the war. An outright victory by either Russia or Ukraine is increasingly unlikely, and a diplomatic resolution is the path that best limits the bloodshed and minimizes the risk that the current war could escalate into a larger conflict. On the question of sanctions, aggressive and targeted sanctions against Russian leaders are warranted. Additionally, sanctions are a legitimate tool of American statecraft and should never be taken off the table. However, overly broad sanctions rarely work as intended and often strengthen the authoritarian regimes that are being targeted while increasing the suffering of ordinary people, something you already see taking place in Russia. Additional examples of this dynamic in action include Iraq in the 1990s, Venezuela, Iran, and Afghanistan, all countries where people had no ability to hold their rulers accountable for the impact of the sanctions precisely because they were authoritarian regimes." End quote. That's the rest of the email. Now, most irresponsibly, Legum highlights the following line. 
An outright victory by either Russia or Ukraine is increasingly unlikely, and a diplomatic resolution is the path that best limits the bloodshed. So he describes this as stand together advocating for the U.S. to, quote, seek to deliver Russia a partial victory. Caldwell clearly does not wish for Russia to achieve victory, partial or otherwise. He is merely acknowledging that any peace will likely involve both Russia and Ukraine getting some things that they want. It's perfectly reasonable to concede that in order to end all the death and destruction, Putin will have to emerge from the conflict as something short of a complete and total loser, as much as we might like it to be otherwise. Legum quotes two foreign policy experts, Brian Catalyst and Daniel Fried, who think the current sanctions should remain in place and are working to reduce Putin's resources for further aggression. They are certainly entitled to that opinion. There is little reason to, to doubt that the sanctions are making things harder in Russia, including for ordinary Russians. But it is not crazy to wonder whether the sanctions will meaningfully prevent Putin from continuing the Ukraine war or whether the amount of suffering we are dispensing to the Russian people is ultimately counterproductive or even immoral. Legum's article has drawn well-deserved criticism from Michael Cohn, a fellow at the Eurasia Group Foundation, and Emma Ashford, who works for the Atlantic Council. Both described Legum's piece as a hatchet job, and I agree with them. In response, Legum criticized Cohn and Ashford on grounds that their organizations also receive Koch funding. But Legum's pet expert, Fried, is also affiliated with the Koch-funded Atl Atlantic Council. So the insinuation that a Koch affiliation means we should automatically reject an expert's criticism backfires in all directions here. The overarching point of Leckham's article is to cast aspersions on Koch Industries' decision to continue operating two glass manufacturing facilities within Russia. Koch Industries, for what it's worth, maintains that it will not, quote, walk away from our employees there or hand over these manufacturing facilities to the Russian government so it can operate them and benefit from them. So, but it's absurd, in my view, to characterize Stand Together skepticism of sanctions as anything other than a sincere belief held by some libertarians, non-interventionists, and even a great many progressives. Indeed, Representative Rokana, one of the most left-leaning members of the House, has taken an identical position. Progressive representatives Ilhan Omar and Cori Bush voted against the U.S. ban on Russian oil imports. Uh, Ilhan Omar was, was here, sitting next to me, when she, when she talked about this issue. Uh, so Leg Legum did not respond, by the way, to a request from comment uh, from, from me. Uh, we'll see how he responds to this. I suspect he will end up denouncing me also as a shill for the Cokes. So I'm looking forward to that. But, uh, and you called out the one person that he quoted. The other one, Brian Katulis, uh, has been heavily subsidized by the UAE throughout his, mm -hmm. throughout his, uh, his think tank career. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, and when, the, when CAP finally stopped taking UAE money, he went to a separate organization that is getting CAP money. Yeah. I mean, it is getting UAE money. And now CAP collaborates with that one, which is a nice little workaround for them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the, the idea that anybody in this uh, story is pure is, is a farce. I, I bet that, that if we could get Judd on here, and he's been on the show before, that if you could take the Cokes out of this question, I bet, you, I bet he would agree with almost everything that the Cokes right. that was so that was what was so weird about it because what they're saying like this whole email I read it and he doesn't link to the whole email in his in his piece but if you read it I, I, I don't disagree with anything in it I don't think you would disagree in anything in it I don't think Kim would disagree with anything in it I, I think like it's a pretty like he's benign for, statement right. he's pro sanctions on you know right. Russian leaders right. people close to Putin you know and efforts like that that are trying to like punish the the regime he's you know, they're, Charles Koch saying that they're against the, or whoever wrote the right. thing, uh, you know, that they're against the war, but they're acknowledging that there's not likely to be a complete military victory <laughs> right. by either side, which, given the fact that Crimea is currently and has been occupied by Russia for like seven years, like even if, even if they only hold on to Crimea, it would make that claim true. And, was, and so even if the only compromise that Ukraine made out of this was to say, okay, you know what, we're going to recognize de jure control of Crimea by Russia to end this war. That would be a, quote, partial victory for Russia. Right. And I think the whole world should be like, great, Let, we, ended the, we ended this war and that's all that happened. Yeah. So where, where, where exactly the line gets drawn? So, but I think it, it is, you know, the Cokes have been some, you know, the, particular, I'm in Judd's precise generation, basically. And, you know, the Cokes have been our boogeymen for our whole lives. And so if we see the Cokes somewhere, uh, we have a lot of skepticism about what the position <laughs> is. I have kind of been immunized to that a little bit because of 
you know, all of my interest in drug policy mm -hmm. and, and finding them for so many years kind of on the right side of a lot of drug policy issues, including up to and including racial justice issues on, mm -hmm. the, on, the, on the drug uh, policy front. And so I'm more open to being like, okay, the Cokes are the worst or the Coke because his brother's dead. Uh, however, let's see what they're saying because maybe it's, maybe it's correct. And the point about broader sanctions only strengthening a regime and hurting people, you know, is is held up by history, and and also they, they didn't even get into the point about what it's going to do to you know wheat prices, bread prices, mm -hmm. all the suffering that it's going to produce outside of Russia, which is going to both strengthen some authoritarians and topple some governments and create unrest all over the world. So, and, and maybe we're supposed to do those sanctions anyway. And honestly, in their email, they didn't even really say, Judd kind of accused them of right. saying, no, we, we support right. the immediate like, end of these. They were like, this. Eh, I don't, yeah. but are they going to work? Are they causing more damage? Are they, like, right. those are the right questions to be asking. Right. I have those questions too. So, it, so does so, Judd, I bet. Yeah, I, 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 bet, I, I bet, bet he does. Yeah. So, well, I'm looking forward to your radar coming up next, Ryan. So stay tuned for that.